In this video, I'm going to show you how to install MongoDB, connect it to your Node app, and perform the CRUD operations. Now this video is part of a full series on how to build a REST API, so I highly recommend checking those videos out. But if you just want to learn the basics of MongoDB with Node, then in that case, welcome, because you're in the right place. So feel free to check out the timestamps on this video, and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and with that said, let's get started with the code. So first things first, how the heck do we run a MongoDB database? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You just go ahead and download it and install it. Go to the MongoDB website, link in the description below, and we want to download the community version. This is the free version. So before we download it, we want to choose the zip package and then click download. But there's also another program that I want you to download and it is called Robo3T. Now Robo3T is nothing more than a graphical user interface that allows us to visually see what's going on inside of the database rather than typing in commands into the command line for all you noobs out there. And it makes learning MongoDB a whole lot easier. Now once you've downloaded the MongoDB zip file, go ahead and extract it somewhere you'll remember and I'll just go ahead and extract it in my users folder. And inside the users folder I'll just go ahead and change its name so it looks prettier and I'll also create another folder right next to it and I'll call this MongoDB-data. Now you can call these two folders whatever you want but this first folder is where MongoDB is installed on your system. The second folder is where the data that is stored inside of MongoDB will be stored on the system. Now inside of the MongoDB folder, you should find another bin folder. And inside of that, you will find an executable called MongoD. The path of this MongoD executable is what we need to run our database from the terminal. So over in VS Code, I'm gonna open up the terminal and type in the path of that MongoD executable. Then I'm gonna do space dash dash DB path and set that equal to that MongoDB dash data folder that I have just created. And this is just saying run the MongoDB database and set the path of the data to be stored in MongoDB dash data. Now you should see a bunch of output showing up and you also won't be able to type anything inside of the terminal. And this output is pretty much saying it's waiting for a connection to connect to the database. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up another terminal. And this time I'm gonna open it up in my node project and I'm going to run npm install MongoDB. Now MongoDB has multiple native drivers that support different programming languages and this npm package is a native driver that allows your node app to connect to MongoDB. So now I think it's important to show you the basics of how MongoDB would store data and as I showed in my two minute video of MongoDB, it is not like a traditional SQL table where we'd have tables with rows and columns, we would actually have a database with multiple collections. Now each collection would have documents and these documents would store JSON-like data. Now these key value pairs are known as fields inside of a document and that document would be again inside of a collection. So first we would need to create a collection but before we create the collection we would need to connect to that database. And I promise all of this would make sense once we connect to the database and perform the CRUD operations. So inside of my index.js file I'm going to require mongodb and it will return an object. So I'm going to create another constant underneath it called mongo client and set that equal to mongodb.mongo client. Now to connect to our database, we need two pieces of information. The first is the connection URI or URL, and the second is the database name. So I'm going to create a constant called connection URI and set that equal to mongodb colon forward slash forward slash the local host IP address and then colon the port number, which is 27017. Now you could write in the place of 127.0.0.1 localhost, but localhost is known to cause problems in MongoDB. So for that reason, we're just going to keep it as 127.0.0.1, which is the localhost or loopback IP address. Next, I'll create another constant called DB name, and I'll set that equal to a string that could be anything. I'll just go ahead and call my database Mongo app. Now we are finally ready to initiate a connection to our database. And how we'll do that is we'll call the Mongo client object and do dot connect. Now connect is a function that resides on Mongo client and this function would accept the minimum of two arguments. The first will be this connection URI and the second will be a callback function. Now this callback function would also accept two arguments. The first one will be the error and the second one will be the client if an error did not occur. So I'm going to go ahead and create an if statement and if there is an error then I'm going to console.log cannot connect to the database. And I'll also place before the console.log return so that it will immediately exit the connect function if it fails. Now underneath my if statement is where I'll be able to perform things like the CRUD operations inside of my database. So I'm gonna create one more constant and I'll call this db and I'll set that equal to client.db and that would be a method that would accept the name of the database. And the name of the database was stored in this constant called db name. So I'll just go ahead and pass through the db function db name. Now whenever I want to add something or remove something to the database, I'll be able to do that using this db constant. 
Now what's left to do is to create a collection so we can insert inside of it a document. And how we create a collection is by simply typing in db.collection and dot collection will be a method that accepts the name of the collection. I'll go ahead and call it users. Now, as soon as I create the collection, we can go ahead and change it with other methods. I'll just go ahead and add the method of insert one. And this would allow us to insert a document inside of our collection. And since the document will contain a JSON like format, I'll go ahead and pass into this method an object with a name property and an age property. Now, inside of my terminal, I'm going to run the node app so we could test our code. And that will be node index.js. And you would see that it would appear that the node app is frozen inside of the terminal. But as soon as I open up Robo3T and go into File, then Connect, it would ask me to create a new connection. I'll leave all the details as is for now, and you'd see I'll get a new connection, and inside of it, I'll get a database called Mongo App. I'll double click on Mongo app and then double click again on Mongo collections. Then I'll choose view documents and you will see that I'll have one document inside of it with three fields. Inside of this document, I'll have a name field with the value of Jax and the age field with the value of 29. And congratulations because you just inserted your first document into a MongoDB database. But before we continue with the rest of the CRUD operations, as promised in the beginning of this video, there are a few things that I would need to clarify here. The first thing is that this db.collection does not necessarily necessarily create a new collection. For example, if I go ahead and run this program again and go inside of Robo3T, I would find only one collection with two documents added inside of it. And that is because db.collection users will only create a new collection if that collection does not exist. So in other words, we cannot have two collections with the same name. However, these two documents that is inside of the collection are identical. It still has the same name as Jax and still has the same age as 28. The only difference is this field right over here called underscore ID, which contains a hexadecimal value that I did not insert to the document myself. This here is known as an object ID and also known as a GUID, which is a globally unique identifier. And this is what helps MongoDB escalate horizontally without collisions because a globally unique identifier is a 12 byte object made up of three different values. Four bytes of it is a timestamp since the Unix Epic, which starts from 0 hundred hours January 1st, 1970, and five bytes of randomly generated numbers, and three bytes of a counter that starts from a random value. This is what allows a globally unique identifier to be unique across the entire globe. So if I want to search for the first Jax who happens to be 29, and not the second Jax who happens to be 29, then in that case I could go ahead and find that document by using its globally unique identifier. So in order to test out finding different documents on the database, we need to create much more documents. Right now we only have two, so I'm going to show you how to create multiple documents at the same time. And how we create multiple documents is exactly the same way how we created one document. But instead of using the method insert one, we'll use another method called insert many. And insert many accepts an array of objects, and each object would be a single document. And if I go to the terminal and run node index.js and go into robo3t, you would find that I'd have five different documents and each document would have their own different fields. Which is one thing I want you to notice about MongoDB and that is it is schemaless. Meaning I could have multiple documents inside the same collection that have different fields and it doesn't need to validate what goes inside of the document or not. I could have one document with a field of email and password and another document without the email and password. Now this is something that can be good or bad depending on the application you are building but in order to specify what goes inside of the database we would need to build a schema which which is beyond the scope of this video and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. But right now what we want to do is read, update and delete data from the database and how we would do that is exactly the same way how we inserted data into the database. So right now I'm going to comment out the code for insert many and go ahead and do db.collection for users and then I will go ahead and write find one. Now find one is a method that accepts two arguments. The first one will be an object of what it is that we want to find and the second one will be a callback function for what we want to do with the thing that we have found inside of the database. So right now I want to find a document with the name of Jax and there's currently two documents inside of the database with the name of Jax. Then inside of the callback function it will accept two arguments. The first one will be the error and the second one will be the user that we have found. Now obviously this error will go inside of an if statement so we don't really need to do that right now. It's pretty much the exact same code as we've done before. But right now, what I'm going to just do is console.log 
the user and as you could see inside of the terminal I will get logged out to the console that user but we also have another user with the name of Jax and the reason why we didn't find it is because we were using the method find one so find one will only bring us the first one with that name so in order to find that specific Jax what we would do is type in the ID of that specific user so I'll just go ahead and put inside of the object underscore ID and this value will be equal to new mongodb dot object ID and between parentheses I will paste in the string of the ID. Now I'll be able to find that specific user with that specific ID. So now I'm going to comment out find one by ID and now I'm going to show you how to find multiple documents at the same time. And in order to do that, similarly, we would use db.collection for users. And then instead of find one, we'll just type in find. And find will take in one argument, which is name, and that is equal to Jax. And then we'll chain onto this another JavaScript method to convert it into an array of objects. And how we would do that is just simply using dot to array and this will take in a callback function of the error and the users and once we get a user back we're going to log it out to the console and right now inside of the terminal you would find I'll get back two objects with the name of Jax and the age of 29 but both object IDs would be different from each other. But what if I want to get a range of values rather than a specific value, for example, less than or equal or greater than or equal, then in that case, we can use a complex query. Now, pretty much whenever you want to use a complex query like greater than or equal, then in that case, what you do is get the value that you want to compare. And in this case, it's the age. And then you'd open and close two more Kelly braces. And inside of it, you do dollar sign and the complex query, and you set it equal to the value that you want to compare to. So for example, if I'm going to search for something that is greater than or equal, I would simply use the dollar sign GTE which stands for greater than or equal LTE is less than or equal LT is less than GT is greater than IN means I want to find anything that contains this or that NIN stands for not in and finally dollar sign exists means I want to find a document where a specific field exists regardless of its value whether it's defined or undefined now there are plenty more complex queries out there so I left a link in the description below if you want to check them out. So now I'm going to comment out the last piece of code that we have written and I'm going to show you how to update a specific document and updating is a little bit more complicated than reading and inserting documents into the database. So in order to update a specific document we would start off exactly the same as the previous examples we would do db collection of users and then we will type in update one. Now update one is a method that accepts two objects and a callback function. And the first one will be the object of what it is we want to update. So I'm going to go ahead and paste into it an object ID of the second Jax into our database. Then I'm going to pass in a second object. And this object is to specify what it is that we want to change inside of that object. And inside of that object, we'll type in dollar sign set and we'll set that equal to another object, which is name, and I'll change that equal to Jones. So this is pretty much saying we want to get the user with this specific ID and set the name equal to Jones. And as for the third argument, that would be the callback function with the error and the user. And I'll just go ahead and log out to the console, the updated user. And as you could see, I have the user being updated here. And inside of Robo3T, the user is updated. And right now it is time for the final CRUD operation, and that is deleting a document. And how to delete a document is pretty much the simplest of them all. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment out the previous code and do db.collection for users and then dot delete. Now this method could either be delete one or delete many. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose delete one. And inside of it, I'll provide an object to describe which documents I want to delete. So I'm going to provide it with a property of name and set that equal to Jax. And now if I go ahead and run the program and go into Robo3T, I will find that the document with Jax has been successfully deleted. And that's pretty much everything I have to show for this video. Let me know if you want to see a tutorial on complex queries. And as for the next video, we're going to be taking a look at Mongoose. We're going to be learning how to build schemas and validate data. So stay tuned for that video. And make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.